Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hot Tag. On today's episode, we're talking Survivor Series. Who's the best team of all time? Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Hot Tag, YouTube's first international tag team champions. I am your three-time Rookie of the Year, Jake Ward, and I'm going to tag in my Minnesotian friend all the way from Canada, John Thompson. John? Madness is in the house, my brother. I'm excited. I'm excited today because we're getting close to that time of year, you know? And, and when I was growing up, Survivor Series was synonymous with Thanksgiving, right? This is where we had the gobbledygooker, who was literally a Thanksgiving turkey, who came <sighs> out for us at, at, at Survivor Series. So that time of year, it's fall. Everything's getting colder. I just started a fire for the first time in my fireplace. It's getting cold here up in Canada. And I just get these nostalgic feelings for Survivor Series. So when you brought this topic up, uh, the topic of today, I was, I was pretty excited, to tell you the truth. I am excited. While well, you were getting cold on my side, we were getting ready for a nice hot summer. And my favorite thing about the Survivor Series was running to the video shop and finding the cool VHS cassettes because the graphics, the pictures of the teams was something that I would just stare probably more than I actually watch the video itself. We are talking about the greatest Survivor Series team of all time. We're going through all the Survivor Series teams. Now, Madness, let me tell you the rules. So the rules that we've gone, our criteria, it must be a four-man team. So it eliminates, you know, your five-man teams, your threes, your tags, and things like that. It must be a four-man team. Now, Uncle uh, Madness, you being a, a, a good guy, you're going to take on the team of the faces. Your team must be a face. And I'm going to have a dark cloud over me. And I'm going to be doing the low blows, the referee distraction, and I will be taking on the heels. Now, who, Uncle John, let, let's talk about your greatest Survivor Series team of all time. Look, I got to roll my sleeves up for this one because this, this topic literally goes to the core of what initially made me a fan of pro wrestling. And that is, like you said, the graphics, the pictures, where you could have all these guys. You know, you got Hogan, you got Macho, you got the Warrior, you got all the good guys are teaming up against all the bad guys. And to me at that time, I'm like, you know, six, seven years old. It just, it, you know, it set my mind on fire, basically, with all the, the colors and the personalities. And being that I'm going with the faces, I'm going with the good guys, uh, there, there really wasn't much of a question for me in what I was picking, because the image of these guys, I can, it's burned into the deepest recesses of my brain, and it is one version of the Hulkamaniacs. So you have Hulk Hogan, you got the big boss man, you got my boy, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you got the one and only Tugboat. Of course, we have Typhoon here, but uh, he was Tugboat in this iteration of the Hulkamaniacs. This was 1990. Oh, you have no idea. My mind is blown. I'll tell you why. I mean, I just wanted to give a few honorable mentions. I mean, there were Survivor Series teams because I'm very nostalgic. Back in 1992, and the Beverly Brothers and Money Inc. teamed up together. Um, I also loved the 1989 version of the Million Dollar Team with Million Dollar Man, Zeus, who my dog is named after, and the Powers of Pain. And then, of course, that same year, you had the Roods Brood. I love myself a Heel Survivor Series team. But I have to choose a team that won. That was my criteria, my little secret criteria. My team had to have won. And if you're picking a team that has Hulk Hogan in it, you're always winning. So my team was so good that they were the first ever team to sweep the nation. They swept their whole team. They won four zip. Not only that, they beat three future Hall of Famers and then almost went on further on in the night to absolutely destroy Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. And speaking of Hasbro's, this was one member of my team. In proper form. And then, of course, he's my European champion at home. And they were led by the model Rick Martel. Oh, my mind is blown because we have picked the same year, 1990. And I have picked 
the Visionaries. Now, let me tell you why they are the greatest team. Not only those two moments happen, but it could have just been so much better. If you go through the rest of the card, they would have toppled off. There was the Alliance. They would have beat Nikolai Volkov, Tito Santana, and the Bushwhackers. They would have beat Dusty Rhodes as Dream Team. I mean, they almost lost to Rhythm and Blues. They would have beat the Warriors. They would have uh, Ultimate Warrior, Texas Tornado, and the Legion of Doom. They would have beat this. This is the greatest Survivor Series team of all time. So, so who did they beat in the first round? So they beat the Vipers. They beat Jake the Snake Roberts. Jimmy Superfly Snooker and the Rockers. Ah, I see, I see, I see. And okay, so run, run me through the guys again. We've got, we've got the model Rick Martel, we've the, got the Warlord, Warlord, and then you got Strike Force. No, Power and Glory. Power. Oh, Rick, Rick Martel was a part of Strike Force. Oh Power and Glory. Hercules and Paul Roma. They had one of the most underrated finishing moves. Of all time, the suplex off the top rope into the splash from the other corner. And the best thing about it was Hercules would sit on the second the second rope ready for the superplex. He'd give the hot tag and then Paul Roma runs across and gives that point. Are you ready, brother? Shoom! Bang! And once you hit that, it was all over. One of the most underrated tag teams in WWF history. Th those guys just needed a little something extra. And they, they could have have been off to the moon i think really like i don't know if it was their inability to to get on the mic uh consistently enough or what maybe they just didn't get the chance but they're, they're impressive i will say that now you have to let us all know in the comments whose team is better now i'm going to quickly run through if the madness john thompson if he's hulkamaniacs we're going up against my team the visionaries and it just goes Quick and simple. First of all, we want to put over the Warlord. We want to show how big he is. Boom. Power slam on Duggan. Then the Tugster comes in and he wants to get bits and pieces all going. So he comes in with a hot fire. But of course, it is that distraction from the Slickster on the outside. The distraction. And then, of course, the underrated finishing move from Power and Glory. Eliminates. Tugboat, then you have got the Hulkster comes in and he knocks down any, everyone. Big boot, leg drop, Paul Rome is gone. And then to put a bit of shock in the system, big boot, leg drop, boom. Then the Warlord is gone. So I'm left with two and two. And then from there, I've got a distraction. Rick the Model Martel with the arrogance in Hulk Hogan's face. In ah. Hulk Hogan's face. And Hulk Hogan chases the model Rick Martel because I want to build a program between them two for the next WrestleMania. I know it for those guys. Yep, so they're both counted out. Now I'm left with Hercules and the big boss man. But the thing is, Hulk Hogan's big foot and leg drop was so powerful that Paul Romer is not yet left. So then we've got the slick star, Paul Romer on the outside. And then Paul Romer is whacking a chair. With a distraction on the big boss man. Massive power slam from the mighty Hercules. One, two, three. Hercules is your sole survivor. The Visionaries are the ultimate Survivor Series team. The ultimate survivors. You know, I, I, don't, I don't particularly hate that. I don't think that's a functional way to move <laughs> forward with any of those storylines. But I don't hate it. I wouldn't hate it as one-off. I think that's okay. And I like the idea of Hogan Martell. Because that was never even a, a, a flash in anybody's eye. That, underrated. That yeah, totally underrated. Paul Martel, ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right. Well, let's flip that on its head then, okay? Because I don't think for a minute that your boys are going to be ta able to take out my boys. And I've thought about this a little bit more significantly this time around. So here's the quick and dirty. We're kicking things off with Hogan and Hercules. You want to know why? Because we're starting out with a good old test of strength <laughs> right out of the gate. Okay? Test of strength. Of course, Hercules kicks Hogan low blow, gets out of the strength, puts him in the, the opponent's corner, and everybody is beating up on the Hulkster. The Hulkster is in a bad position, right? We, we're talking five minutes of absolute Pearl Harbor on Hulk Hogan until finally... 
Hogan can can gets a little bit of an upper hand, gets out of the corner, hot tag into Jim Duggan, and Jim Duggan is a house on fire. He goes nuts. He knocks everybody off the apron. And, of course, uh, Hercules is still in the ring. Uh, Hercules is dazed. He gets... It's up, but what does he catch? He catches the three-point stance from Duggan, and then it's a one, two, three. Hercules is out of there. Unfortunately for Duggan, Mr. Warlord is coming in next. And Jim Duggan, as good as he is, is no match for the absolute power of the Warlord. Okay? And the Warlord, it's going to be really impressive. We want to bump the Warlord up because the Warlord is going to end up going against Hogan at the very end. So the Warlord does does some mega power moves to Duggan, and Duggan is out of there right quick, and Warlord's just like waiting for the next one to come in. And these guys, they're just like, oh, Jesus. Hogan is still beat up. Hogan is still done. So we got Tugboat and Boss Man. Boss Man says, it's time to put this man in the cell. Boss Man goes in there. They're back and forth. Warlord ends up tagging out. And that Rick the model, model Martell comes in and they start having some fisticuffs. Now, the one thing that you utilized in your match, which I think people forget, is Slick. Slick is there, right? And so much like in your match, Hogan got the perfume. This time, the model pulls uh, Boss Man into the ropes. Boss Man's leaning on the ropes. And Slick, psh, Slick gives him the perfume punch. Right? Can you believe that? So Boss Man is blinded. Hogan's just getting up. Tugboat's like, he just blinded him. Referee doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, and the Boss Man gets rolled up by the model for the one, two, three. So that leaves us uh, two versus three at this point in time. Now, you've got Hogan and Tugboat. Tugboat at this point in time, right, he's kind of, they're trying to push him up there as the next big thing in the face department. So he gets in there and automatically it's uh, time for Paul Roma to come in. Paul Roma, unfortunately, his tag team partner had the glory in this one and there was there was nothing left for Roma. Tugboat is made to look very, very strong. He does some big avalanches in the corner. Roma is out of there, no problem whatsoever. And as soon as that happens, Martell is back over the ropes. Martell's back over the ropes, trying to get everything he can on Tugboat. Tugboat, tiring out, tires Tugboat out to the point where Martell dumps him over the ropes. He's outside. We're talking about a 450 pound man here. It's not easy to get out or in the ring for this guy. And Martell just mercilessly beats on him until an eight count, he jumps back in the ring. Tugboat cannot get back up. He gets counted out and Martell is strutting his stuff. Tell you what. So it's Hogan versus Martell and the Warlord. Hogan comes in, still a little groggy. Martell is like, I've got this. I've got it. No problem. Martell playing to the crowd a little bit. He turns around, but guess what? Hogan, in a rare uh, instance of ingenuity in the ring, turns him around, small package, one, two, three. Small package from Hogan, believe it or not. He wasn't e even grabbing the tights believe that or not and here's where it all comes down hogan versus warlord this is where i want to bring the the next big uh storyline it's yeah. hogan it's warlord right these massive guys we can build this up uh into mania next year and this is going to be a classic uh hogan type of situation where hogan is going to hulk up uh and we're going to go through all the steps unfortunately Mr. Fuji is coming from the back. He comes from the back and he gives Hogan the dust in the eyes. Warlord rolls him up. Warlord is going to get the pin and that Warlord is the winner. Warlord is the winner, right? Not so fast. Oh, pump the bright from the back. Earl Hebner come, comes from the back, says no way. Re We're not restarting this match. Warlord, you're disqualified. Hogan is the winner. Oh, Hogan must pose. The old dusty finish. Absolutely yes. love it. That is an absolute ripper. And back then in 1990, I didn't mind any time Hogan pose because it certainly sits in my heart when it comes to the childhood. But what sits in your heart, everyone watching? Who wins this one? <laughs> 
There's a three-time rookie of the year, Jake Ward win. Or does the madness, John Thompson, take this one out? And also let us know your favorite Survivor Series team of all time. We absolutely love it. Guys, do everything you can to like, share, and subscribe to the hot tag. This will be the best wrestling show you'll ever come. And from the international YouTube tag team champions, we'll see you next time.